Hello everybody, it's Cheryl with Silver Sage Studio and today I'm going to be sharing you, sharing with you this unicorn rainbow card that I made using that sentiment strip from Erin Reed from Erin Reed Makes. So I'm starting off with this stamp set from My Favorite Things and I'm going to use these two unicorns right here. And uh, now this set is not available anymore. I will link below to a search from Simon Says Stamp of Unicorn Stamps. There's a ton of sets out there, and even um, My Favorite Things has new sets. So there's lots of unicorn stamp sets out there, but listen, I'm a big believer in using what you have, and that's a lot of what I want to do on this YouTube channel is to help people remember that they don't have to go buy a ton of stuff to make fun projects. So um, you could actually do this very same card, but instead of using two unicorns, maybe use two critters, maybe two raccoons or two panda bears or whatever you have on hand. I think it would work for either of those. You just probably want to ditch the clouds maybe um, if that's the case, but maybe not. Maybe you got a couple panda bears hanging out in clouds. So here I am stamping my two unicorns onto my A2 cardstock, and I've already kind of got this whole thing mapped out, so I knew exactly where I wanted them to go. And now I'm stamping them onto post-it notes that are covered fully with adhesive in the back. So I don't have any more masking paper, but I do have these post-its lying around my house, and so I am using them for a affordable and easy mask. So I need two lines to make this rainbow happen. A horizontal line and a vertical line that goes halfway down the middle. That horizontal line is where the rainbow arch is going to come land and that horizontal line helps me a couple different ways. Okay so this is how I made the rainbow. I'm starting by making um, marks along that horizontal line, I'm going to find the point at which I want my outer arch to be. And that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm just putting a little hash mark there. And then I'm measuring a quarter inch in um, for each other hash mark. And I'm making six of these, one for each arch of that rainbow. So that is going to help me figure out where I'm going to be drawing my arches from. And I'm going to zoom in right here just so you can see those hash marks, the hash marks that I made that are going to help me along the way with making this rainbow. I finally decided that I was going to use my mat to help me measure out that center point because I was still having some problems with that. So I'm getting that center um, vertical line drawn. And then I'm going to take an old school compass, one of these dually bobs here, and you can buy these at a grocery store. And I'm going to place that in the center where the two lines intersect. And then I'm going to pull that arm out where the pencil is to that very outside hash mark that I have made on that horizontal line. And I'm going to very lightly draw an arch. And I'm just going to continue on each of those hash marks. I'm going to pull the compass in a little bit more and then make that arch. And then I'm going to continue to do that for the rest of those arches, six in total. Obviously, if you want to use more than six colors or fewer than six colors, whatever you choose to do would work. Um, these compasses are really easy to find. You can find them at office supply stores. You can find them at grocery stores. You can find them at places like Target and Walmart, especially um, when we're at back to school time because there are grade levels that require students have one of these compasses when they come to school. I'm finishing off those arches by making my very final arch right here. And then I am taking those unicorn masks and I'm going to place them over the unicorns. And it's at this point that I realize that my rainbow is going to come down lower than that um, horizontal line because I want it to look like the rainbow is disappearing into the clouds. 
So I'm not going to show you this whole process, but I do go cut those little dooley bobs out and get them placed here onto the card base. All right, and this is where the fun really begins. I am using a small heart stamp, and you can really use any shape you would want to use here. If you're making it with a larger stamp, you would just want to make your arches larger. I am starting at that spot where that center line intersects with that top arch. And I am really just eyeballing my spacing. I did try at one point um, on my first version of this card to draw lines that went through the middle of the arch and try to space things out just right, but it just didn't work mathematically because as the arches get smaller, the parts were getting more smushed in. So I just decided I was going to eyeball it and try to be consistent with what I was doing. So at this point, I realized I had forgotten to mask down below where the rainbow is going to end on pretty much just the inner two circles, the purple and the blue, where they're going to end in the cloud. And I want it to look like they're kind of disappearing into or behind a puff of cloud. So rather than drawing just a straight line across, I'm making here a mask of a wavy line. I do have a lint-free cloth off to the side and I've spritzed it with water. And I use that to make sure that I'm really cleaning that stamp well in between each color because I don't want contamination. And then before I actually go to stamp onto my card base, I'm stamping just on my masks there. You could just do it on a scratch piece of paper um, to make sure that I'm getting a nice clean color. I don't want a peachy orange here with some pink still on it. I want a nice clean orange. So I stamp it off on that uh, masking just so I can make sure I'm getting two things, a clean color and also that I don't have moisture from the wet cloth on my stamp which can make your stamping blotchy. At this point I'm going to play some music and let you watch the rest of my stamping and I'll come back and show you how I finished off this card.
removed my masks and I want to go back and erase my all of my drawing lines that I have added um, along the rainbow and my hash marks and all of that. And so I'm very carefully erasing. You want to make sure that your ink is dry all the way before you do that erasing because you certainly don't want to be smudging it. This is an aqua aqua L pencil. I have a hard time saying that. And these are great pencils because you can use them as regular pencils or you can use them, as you see I'm doing here, as a watercolor pencil. And it's really great, by the way, to use if you're going to be watercoloring because when once you start watercoloring, those harsh pencil lines kind of soften because it is water reactive. And I just wanted a little bit of shading on my unicorn, doing some dance in there, wanted some shading on my unicorn and on the clouds. So I'm going in and lightly sketching out my shadows and the edge of the cloud there and then taking a water brush and pulling that color out a little bit and softening it. I am very particular about what kind of water brush I will use. I have a bunch that I just don't like because they put out too much water. To be honest with you, I just need to go buy some more of these because these put out just the right amount of color. You do want to be careful. I am not doing this on watercolor paper. This is regular old cardstock. So you don't want to be putting down a lot of water or do too much of that scrubbing with that brush because if you do, you're going to get pilling. And then I decided that my unicorns here needed a little bit of color, so I'm using these ink tense pencils. I have sharpened them so that they're nice and sharp. Now I have a set and I'll link below to the set, but I'll also name which of the colors that I used here. And um, what I love about these ink tense pencils is they, you know, you can use them as regular pencils if you want, but you can also use them as watercolor pencils. And once you put that water to these ink tense pencils, the color really brightens and becomes very intense and it's also ink so once it dries it is no longer going to be water reactive now i particularly like using these ink tense pencils when i'm going to be doing coloring on cardstock like this because they take such little water to activate I wouldn't want to be doing this with, um, you know, a regular watercolor pencil, I don't think, maybe, I mean, maybe, but it works really well with these ink tense pencils. And as you can see here, just a little bit of water pulls out that color and makes it a lot more vibrant. Now, I've had to adjust my my video here. I don't know why the color was a little bit washed out. So if it looks like it's not natural, that's why I'm not trying to overemphasize the colors I'm getting here. Um, but I do love this. And on this one, I had the idea that the color should be kind of coming from the rainbow into the unicorn's horn and mane. So I'm making sure that the yellow is touching the yellow hearts and um, so on and so forth, just to, you know, have a little bit of fun with my coloring. You could use here um, any kind of coloring tool, really. You could use some water-based markers, you could use um, Zig Clean Color, Clear Color, Real Brush Markers, um, really you could use anything. You could use a child's Crayola markers or coloring pencils. Crayons probably wouldn't want to use here, obviously, because it's such a small area. You just, um, I was really glad that I had really sharpened those pencils so that they were nice and sharp for that coloring. When you're coloring with ink tense pencils, you'll see this again a little bit later, but you want to color really lightly. If you put too harsh of a mark down, it's going to leave a permanent line on the paper and not look blended. So you want to just really lightly color. And I have decided every cloud needs a silver lining. So I'm just taking a silver acrylic paint marker here and going around the edge of my cloud there and adding that silver lining, which I thought was pretty appropriate considering that we're living in some difficult times right now. And I like that metaphor of seeing the silver lining in situations. 
I'm using a very, very fine micron pen to color in the host on my unicorns here. I do believe that this is a 0.1 millimeter width nib, so it's very, very tiny, which was perfect for what I was doing here. I was looking at my clouds and decided they needed a little bit more of that sketchy feel added back to them. So I'm going back here with my Aquarelle pencil and adding a little bit of sketching and then I'm going to put some of that shading on the unicorn's nose as well. Now I'm putting on the sentiment. This sentiment set comes from a set that I got from Erin Reed from Erin Reed Makes. I used it last week in last week's video, so you can check that out if you'd like. It looks very different. But I am gluing my printer paper onto cardstock because the cardstock wouldn't go through my printer. And I want it to be popped up on my card, so I really wanted it on that cardstock. So now I'm just trimming away some of that extra um, cardstock there, and then I'm trimming off an eighth of an inch all the way around that card base. I'm only going to show you here two sides for the sake of time. Now, I wanted that card to go on rainbow colored paper, but I didn't have any rainbow colored paper, so I decided to make my own. Here I've got my card base and I have scored it at the halfway mark so it's going to be an A2 sized card and I don't need to worry about more than just a little more than an eighth of an inch all the way around. Now this is really the best approach I think to coloring with ink tensils. You not ink tensils, ink tens pencils. You want to not only color very lightly onto your cardstock, but it helps if you just go in these little circles and then you don't get a harsh line that doesn't completely blend out. So I'm going to go ahead here and speed things up and play some music. Time for the final touches on this card. I am popping up that sentiment using foam adhesive and I'm going to pop that baby down together apart and then I'm going to go in with some Wink of Stella and add a little bit of shimmer to my unicorn's manes. This was such a great sentiment to use this together apart. I love it so much. And if you want to see a completely different use of this very same sentiment, then check out this video. Thanks for watching, everybody.